Monsters will be glad are extinct. Sea scorpion. Imagine a kayak-sized swimming scorpion. Got it in mind? Aren't you grateful they went extinct four million years ago? These giant shelled sea arachnids sported pincers the size of a paddle and were non-discriminate eaters gobbling up anything that came their way. Scientists theorize that they were a placid species, but on looks alone, that's still a no from me on the friendship front. Meganeura. The Meganeura is not the kind of dragonfly that dreamily skims the pond as you picnic at the water's edge. If a Meganeura were in the area of your picnic blanket, you can call your romantic lunch over because its wingspan will cause more than a ripple in time. These massive dragonflies were the largest known flying insect to exist on Earth. They had a wingspan of about two and a half feet, so it created a lot more than a bit of turbulence when landing beside you. Luckily, they were on Earth long before man was frequenting ponds, a few hundreds of millions of years ago. The era they thrived in was known as the Carboniferous Period. This was a period of gigantism, which lasted only 30 million years. Later, many of these huge arthropods went extinct when conditions changed or evolved to become smaller. Thank goodness. Arthropleura. If you had to cross paths with an Arthropleura, it might be your last day alive. Not because it's dangerous, but because when you see an eight and a half foot long millipede scuttling towards you, you don't have any other option but to die. This horrifying herbivore has all the same traits as its common, modern millipede clan that we experience today. Creepy feelers, a million fast-paced legs, undulate like freaky frills and mandibles that are the stuff of nightmares. Sure, they also only eat dead plant matter, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they can maneuver at incredible speeds and were longer than a fully grown man. And if all this is just too much to handle, scientists left us this to consider. The Arthropleura could probably rear up its body into a defensive pose, reaching eye height to a human adult. If they hadn't gone extinct millions of years ago, I would literally be choosing my gravestone. Caprosuchus. The Caprosuchus summed up is a giant land and water adapted hunting crocodile. Compared to its modern cousins, it boasts massive tusks on both upper and lower jaws, forward facing eyes, and longer legs to help it amble over land. It was also larger, around 20 feet long. The Caprosuchus fossils were found in Africa in 2009 and dated to around 100 million years old. This puts them alive around the time of the Middle Cretaceous period. The dino croc was named after the paleontologist that discovered it, Paul Sereno. The name Caprosuchus means boar crocodile in Greek. The name is inspired by its jaws, lined with oversized tusks, like boars. Its body makeup with longer legs and forward eye position proves that it didn't just hunt around lakes and rivers, but spent time hunting on the African plains looking for prey. Like modern crocs, they are most likely solitary hunters, but had the added advantage of tusks to impale its catch and hold onto it with its mighty jaws. Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus is the prehistoric incarnation of the saltiest receptionist you've ever come across. A spiny creature with a long nose that looks down at you from it, ending in a sharp-toothed grimace. It is massive, reaching 40 to 60 feet in length and weighing a staggering 20 tons that walked on hind legs. Its crocodile snout and other adaptations are evidence that it was a semi-aquatic, eight-story high walking horror on land and in water. It was far larger than the T-Rex and Gigantosaurus, leaving them behind in the shade of its scaly, sail-like spinal structure. Sarcosuchus. The Sarcosuchus blows any crocodile out of the water. Literally, it was a 40-foot super croc that lived during the Cretaceous period. And let's just say it owned around the swimming hole. This super croc feasted on crocodiles that came by for a drink, and with a snap powered by 10 tons of weight behind it, it tackled the dinos large and small. It mostly ate fish, but was known to tackle a Spinosaurus if it happened to cross its path. An interesting trait was that this super croc didn't stop growing its entire life. So as long as it was alive, it was expanding and dominating any muddy swamp it inhabited. Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus, or terror bird by name, terror bird by reputation, these flightless birds were total terrors, standing between 10 and 16 feet tall. 
They terrorized America 60 million years ago. Their hooked beaks were perfect for predation, which allowed them to dominate their territory until 2 million years ago. There are different theories about whether these birds were airborne or not, but many experts believe the bones of this beast were hollow, making them light and that they could cover distances of thousands of miles or kilometers at a time. Gigantosaurus. It didn't get its name for nothing. This monster had a head the size of an average human being and even topped the size of a T-Rex. It had 80 serrated teeth, which were unnecessary if eating humans because they could be swallowed up in one bite, but they did help when feasting upon other dinosaurs. We have to be fair though, Gigantosaurus actually means giant southern lizard and has Greek origins. They were on Earth 30 million years before the T-Rex and were the largest meat-eating dinosaur of South America. Despite its huge size, its brain was rather small, believed to be the size of a banana. As the saying goes, all brawn, no brains. Andrew Sarkus. In 1923, Kanchwem Pao discovered a massive wolf-like skull in Mongolia. In 1924, it was described by Henry Fairfield Osborne and named Andrew's Ruler, aka Andrew Sarkus, after the original expedition leader, naturalist Roy Chapman Andrews. A wolf-like skull found in Mongolia doesn't sound too exotic, but when we tell you it was three feet tall and dated back to 48 to 41 million years ago, it suddenly gets more interesting. Now, it should be noted that there has only been one such skull found, and so all information that scientists have extrapolated is based on this one fossil and they're looking for more fossil evidence to back up their claims. The animal was DNA tested and labeled a mammal, and paleontologists were able to begin constructing a picture of this giant animal. Furthermore, it was possible to determine that it was a canine with a long snout, powerful jaws, and a fur coat. The animal was obviously an apex predator, standing six feet tall at the shoulder and 12 feet long, weighing up to 1,000 pounds. By far, it's the largest carnivorous mammal to ever walk the Earth. Andrew Sarkis would have had a large hump on its back to anchor its huge head to its body, and its jaws were almost certainly a powerhouse based on the skull size. They were discovered along the shoreline, which, given their jaws' capacity, makes them a candidate for including turtles and mollusks in their diet. Hallucigenia. The worm was definitely created on the day that evolution drank the Kool-Aid. It can only be described as something cooked up in the imagination of a bad trip. And that's exactly what paleontologist Simon Conway Morris thought when he discovered it in 1977. So he named it Hallucigenia. The fossil was found in the Canadian Rockies 66 years prior, but it had been classified as an annelid worm, worms that include leeches and earthworms. On closer inspection, Conway Morris thought it deserved a closer look and so he discovered a species that literally flipped science on its head. Conway Morris described the worm as walking on seven pairs of stilt-like spines, and then on its back it had seven pairs of tentacles flailing about 508 million years ago in the ocean deep. It was also described as having a bulbous head. Until 1991, this was the accepted truth about hallucigenia, and that's when scientists Lars Ramskold and Hu Zhangguang found a similar specimen in China, a related animal called Microdictian. This is where things got clearer. This species has clear back plates between the spines that show that their armored side of spikes and plates was for protection and not their legs. That flipped everything back on its head so the dangly flailing tentacles were clearly their mode of transport. But then which side was its head? Under an electron microscope, the picture became clearer, and hallucigenia revealed two eyes and a toothy grin on the opposite end to Conway Morris's original head. Then, what was inside its elusive mouth? Well, a fearsome trap of teeth that nothing going in could escape from. It featured a ring of teeth around the mouth and throat that prevented anything from exiting again, and it probably sucked in water and food directly into its simple gut without chewing. Either way you look at it, it was a creepy crawler and we all agree it should remain in the past where it belongs. 
Which of these would be your worst nightmare come true? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. One, Mosasaurus. Enter a giant aquatic lizard you never knew was your worst nightmare until now. The Mosasaurus was a 50 foot long lizard with a massive jaw of giant teeth ready to snap up anything it comes upon, mostly fish, plesiosaurs, and even its own kind, mosasaurs. It was found in Europe and North America around the Central Loire Valley, South Dakota, and Nebraska, mostly in the area that would later become the North Atlantic Ocean. It existed from the Upper Cretaceous period to around 60 million years ago. With all that predator power, it was a carnivore with a massive midsection and a powerful tail, like an iguana or crocodile of today. It had two sets of fins and breathed air, so needed to return to the surface to take in air the way whales do. 